Hey everybody, it's Kia Koopas here. Welcome back to some more Sonic Adventure 2. In the last part, I began my guide on Chow, and in this part, we're gonna go ahead and go into a little more details about Chow. Now, as you're raising a Chow, you may start noticing a few things. First of all, Chow can perform, can like have bonds with characters. If you get a lot of hearts, I guess I should explain. If a Chow gets a heart, like for example, I'm gonna just pick up the food here, and I'm gonna give it to the Chow. It gives you a heart, it will make you like that child will like you more and pretty much how it works is once the child likes you it'll do so like for example it will come up like it starts skipping happily towards you and it'll do stuff like that however more importantly though um as you as a child aligns to your character it will take an alignment to either the light side or the dark side now pretty much how child work is when they evolve for the first time which i believe happens at the age of one child essentially evolve into either Hero, Dark, or Neutral Chow. Hero Chow are, are uh, born, or are evolved, when they have a strong connection to hero characters, Dark from Dark characters, and Neutral when it's just a new neutrality, when they like, when they like both Dark and Hero. So, that's an important factor to keep in mind. I've, I've used uh, the Chow sliders in Fusion Editor, editor. I'm going to post those up now. You can change like who they like, character bonds, and stuff like that, all in there. Right now, this guy is purely oriented towards the hero side right now. However, there's more to alignments than just that. Because as a Chow, as you get the Chow drives and whatnot, it'll also gain an alignment to a certain stat. Like, I'm going to flash up how it looks like Confusion's Chow Editor. This is one of the most confusing parts of Chow that a lot of people don't understand. Because when a Chow evolves for the first time into its hero, dark, or neutral variant, or into an adult, you can even say, the Chow is a certain type of child. It can be a swimming chow, it can be a power chow, it can be a running chow. And when a chow is aligned to a certain ability, or like a certain stat, essentially, it, that stat will actually go up a level. So like, say it's a running chow and the running had, had like a, a grade of D, when it evolves, it'll go up to a running grade of C. So if there's a, so if there's like a chow that you have but it has like a really low on one stat, you can evolve it to that stat and that stat will get a little better. So it'll be raised a little faster. So that's going to be one thing you're going to want to keep in mind. Now, there's multiple ways you could do because as you can see in the sliders, like you can't have like a running, running and power like fight with each other. And essentially, how this works is by giving a chow either a drive or an animal of a certain power, which is indicated by the border around the item. For example, um, red is power that'll slightly move the bar over to the power side. And essentially, as you give it green drives, it'll slowly start going over to the running side because green is running, flying is purple, and swimming is yellow, as I believe I've said before. So, essentially, what you're, if you want to have a certain type of chow, you've got to, you've got to give it animals and drives of that, certain alive, of that certain ability. And then when it evolves, it'll go into that ability. However, something I didn't know about for a while, animals push the slider a lot more than a, than a chaos drive to. Because animals, I should also explain, animals can also give you child abilities. These are just kind of for fun, which is why they're just kind of like a footnote. But they can give you child abilities, and as well, when you give child animals, they take body parts from it. So yeah, customization that part, but that's kind of self-explanatory that you just find out through customization, so... Yeah, but if you want to influence a Chow through running, essentially what you're going to want to do is take that Chow with the running stats, and you're going to want to give it running animals, as that will influence more and more. And then you just got to limit how much you give it for, like, power, for example. And you, how, what you can do there is you can just, for a while, like for like maybe a few trips, just give it nothing but running, and then balance out power and running so that the two eventually cancel each other out, but it stays on the running side. That's how you're going to want to pick alignments. Alright, so, for the sake of not sitting here for three hours raising this guy, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Fusion Shower to speed up the garden's time scale. Because I, I don't think I've even mentioned that much. Jesus, forgetting. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll, explain it. I'll put like an annotation in the list, but whatever. I'm going to speed up the time scale of the garden so this guy is close to will evolve. So with that, I'll be right back. And as you can see here, I went ahead and changed the sliders. This is what happens when a chow, when a chow reaches a magnitude of one, which is what you can play around in the uh, sliders in Fusion Chow Editor. 
it will evolve. Now, I've set it so that it has a magnitude, like, it's towards running, and it's a hero chow. So, as you can see, it'll go into this cocoon, and you can actually kind of glitch the camera in it, and you can see it evolve, which I'm going to just do here, because I'm incredibly lazy, and I like glitching the game. And as you can see, your chow actually changes. And you just gotta wait for the cocoon to hatch. If it ever does. This can take a while. You can... I think you can figure out, like, what type of chow you're gonna get by the music it plays. It plays a different jingle for the dark. If you create a dark chow. But anyway, here's our chow. Not... Doesn't look like much has changed, but he is now considered an adult chow. So let's go ahead and pick him up. Whenever I can. And as you can see... His eyes are actually different there for a split second, and now he has a halo over him. Now, something very important that you're going to need to know. Whenever, when the first time that you get a hero or a dark chow, you're going to unlock the corresponding garden. For example, this is the hero garden. For those of you who know, hero gardens, like, the gardens have, they're pretty much just purely visual. Because, as far as I know, they don't influence the chow in any way. It's just purely for visual. For that, you see, here's my other chow. This is Jackie. This is my this has been my main chow since my original playthrough. As you can see, his stats are pretty high. That takes a long time to do, by the way, so appreciate it, damn it. And this is my dark chow. I usually only raise one chow at a time, but you can raise more if you want to. And this is Dasho. This is my dark chow. My dark running chow, I should say. And there's Chaki just flying around because he does what he wants. And yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave him here because I don't need him right now. And then when you unlock a Dark Chow, or when you make a Dark Chow for the first time, you make it. You go over here, and you, and you get the Dark Garden. Again, all these toys and whatnot are gotten through races. They don't come with the garden. And this is, I, I really don't like this garden. Ugh, so get out of here. But anyway, the hero, the hero garden has a very interesting glitch that you're gonna want to take advantage of. Normally, when you feed a chow like fruit nuts, no, it only gives it like one extra stack. But if you give it from the hero garden, like if you give it enough from the hero garden, as you can see, stamina is raised is raised anywhere from two to three. Very useful glitch that you're gonna want to abuse. But let me tell you, getting stamina up is probably the most annoying thing in the universe. Alrighty, now you may think, okay, well that's simple enough, but now you may be thinking to yourself, so what else is the perk of, you know, your chow evolving? Well, when a chow evolves, it can, it can become as fertile, and it can mate. Now, breeding chow is a very complicated thing. I'm going to direct you to a website called Chow Island. It has way more detailed stuff than I could ever give on stuff like breeding. And let me tell you, it's vital to something called getting the SSSS chow. But I've never had the patience to do it, so I'm not even going to bother explaining it. If you want to read on it, go to the website. It's much easier. Because, ugh. But anyway, when a chow becomes an adult, it can breed. Now, you either have to wait until breeding season happens, or you can do what I do. Go to, this, go to the black market and buy a uh, heart fruit. Heart fruit costs 300 rings each, and it'll make your chow instantly go into mating season. So let's go ahead and buy two heart fruit, just because I can. Ka-ching! Collect more emblems. Da -da -da -da. That's thing I don't, I'm not sure I explained. Uh, the more emblems you get, the more stuff you'll get in the black market, so you'll get rarer items if you get more emblems. Kind of a nice thing to know. So we go up here. And let's say we want to breed, uh, let's see, Chaki and our newfound... And our newfound here. Chappy. Whatever. Anyway, how chow fruit works is you feed it to them, and at the very last bite, once they consume the entire fruit, they'll instantly go into mating season. So you're going to want to get him. Can get over here? Alright, put him down. And give him hard fruit. And now we just got to wait for these two to finish, which could take a while. Now you're going to want to do this at about the same time, because uh, mating season is limited, like in how long it lasts. It lasts a good amount of time, so you shouldn't need to worry, but better safe than sorry kind of waiting for these guys to go at this point. Alright, now as you can see, Chaki is now in mating season. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy. You don't need to do this, but it's much easier because if two chow are in mating season, they're more likely to mate. I'm just kind of waiting. Come on. Eat your damn fruit. Eat your fruit, god damn it. Get used to this. Chow would love to do that. I'd like to just go, huh? Huh? Are you watching me? 
And now that he's done. Oh, come on. Oh, he, he's doing it automatically. And with this, you'll get this nice little jingle. And then, watch the magic happen. Suddenly an egg. How to Basic would be proud of him. But anyway, when Tu Chao mate, they create an egg. And the egg that you get from the different Chao will have mixed stats based on the two parents. Like I said, so there's a whole science behind it that I don't understand, so I'm not really going to explain it. But anyway, let's hatch and see what we get. Where are you? Wow. Oh, wow. That's actually a really nice breed. We've got a shiny sky blue chow. Look at that. Let's go ahead and take this guy down. Let's see what his stats are, because it's going to be a mix of uh, Chacky and Chappies. Thing. And the color and whatnot, like I said, it's all mixed together from chat from the different parents. It's hard to explain. No way it can't be. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And as you can see, the stats are mixed now. It got its S rank from Chappy. I believe it's got its B and stamina from Chacky. It's running stat it got from Chacky. So yeah, there's all the stats on that. And we got a new and we got a new chat to work with, if you so please. So you may think from this point, okay, cool, now I'm just going to want to go ahead and just raise my child like normal. Well, no. There is still even more to this. Once your child evolves, you still got to go through the se second evolution. Because as you notice, let's say we got this guy right here. This is Dash Shell. As you can see, he's radically different from Chaki. And it all comes down to the second evolution. The second evolution is pretty much, it's, you don't, child don't go into a cocoon during the second evolution. But they still change, like, in their appearance. It's really hard to explain, so I think we're just going to go ahead and do that in the next part. So with that, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you, and I guess I'll see you then, in the next part. Well, I screwed up my outro.